whole idea of the quote unquote artists of today that may embrace the terminology hip hop and call themselves a hip hop artist. I think that question, you might want to ask that question in a different way because they don't claim that. Most of them have a disclaimer that they yeah. rather not be that because it puts too much on their shoulders. We can't put that kind of weight on them if they never claimed it in the first place because not you, don't take none of this personal. Did you put that same kind of emphasis on when white artists was allowed to come into our house called hip hop culture and do what they wanted to do? I think not, we didn't put that pressure on them. Why would we put it on 2 Change or 50 Cents or, 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 or any of them? You see, we're putting a responsibility and a duty on them that they probably haven't been groomed nor prepared nor was ready to deal with. They're not trying to be someone's leader. They're trying to be a rap artist. Most of them never claimed hip hop, which is higher infinite power healing our people. Most of them don't claim that. Most of them just saying, look, I'm just trying to get paid. You understand what I'm saying? I want to do the show, entertain people, smoke a little, drink a little, bag a couple of chicks, and that's the end of it. Get a nice car, live in a nice house, and go to the after party. They're not claiming anything else. Listen to their interviews, the ones that they mumble through. They're not trying to claim that. We're putting that on them simply because we have a deeper appreciation for the hip hop culture. They don't. They use it as a vehicle and a way to get paid and that's it. That's it. So whatever else we put on them and, and uh, respect from them, it's a high expectation that they have no intentions on trying to meet. Not at all. Not at all. Um, hip hop doesn't even come out of their mouths. They're rappers. Uh, and if you ask them about a brief, basic history of hip hop, they probably couldn't even, they probably couldn't even tell you. They, the, the founding fathers, they can't answer. Four fundamental elements of hip hop synthesized by the fifth element, they probably couldn't answer. You know, and, and even what, 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 what was the precursor to hip hop coming to birth? early 70s, they couldn't answer these things. We're putting too much on them. But we did write the books and pass it back to them. They're in the libraries, they're in the colleges, they're in the street, they're online, they won't read them. We do have hip hop artists that sat in this chair right here that gave us aspects of the history, did you not? They won't listen. It's like, so, so, so what is it that you have to do? You understand what I'm saying? And me and my wife had this conversation all the time. It's, it's like, and I said it the other day at a lecture that I was giving at a library. It says, here I am, you know, 50 years or, or more in the game, still living. You understand what I'm saying? Still thinking clear. Can sit down with any of these brothers and have this conversation. Phone number out there, but they won't call. I bump into them in certain places. They don't want to have the discussion. It's, it's, it's It makes me feel like, I help give birth to an aspect of this hip hop thing that most artists coming up today are unaware of and choose to ignore simply because <clears throat> it's one thing to borrow and imitate and emulate black culture. It's a whole nother thing to really be black. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They could stop being black after the concert and go home to their white gated communities and that's the end of that. They don't have to deal with it anymore. You and I can't do that. Me and my wife can't do that. We have to be black 24 seven. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 that's, and that's real. So when you ask that question, it's almost like the time that I do take, you know, their children may be playing, our children may be playing a song that I'm overhearing or they may ask me to listen to or watch this video and then I gotta watch it painfully feeling, you know, every lyric, every, you know, everything that's just not quite right. I mean, that happened to us today. My man Misa was playing something from China and I'm watching the body language of the Chinese brothers doing their thing and they smoking weed and got guns and knives and machetes. And I'm like, that's the only aspect of our culture that they see and you wanna emulate? And imitate? What about the conscious era that we went that we fought so hard to establish to raise the vibratory pitch of our people so we don't wild out? You understand what I'm saying? What happened to that? Nobody want to imitate that. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody want to be the next public enemy. Who wants to be the next KRS one? Who wants to be the next brand newbie or poor righteous te teachers or Queen Latifah? You don't find people doing that. It's almost like it's easier 
like Dr. Amos Wilson said um, in his book, Black on Black Violence and Servitude to White Domination. It's easier not to remind ourselves that we have to interact with black because every time we interact with black, it's painful. Before you got your ass whipped, you black mother so-and-so, you black this, and even back in the day when we insulted one another, we always put black in front of it. Am I right or wrong? You black nappy-headed this. You, and even when we joking and joning and, and, and taking the piss, as they say in London, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Even when we at that point, in the lunchroom, the cafeteria, or in the car, at home, or on the playground, to insult someone, um, you had to put black in front of it. All right, so we have to understand that particular thing. They don't want to interact with that anymore. All right, so lyrics are going to change because now I got to be able to get the paycheck signed very clearly and I got to clearly send this signal to the one that's signing the paycheck that no, I'm not here to offend you. I'm just here to make your daughter and your sons party and have a good time with us. That cool will keep you on tour. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then when you come to grips with your natural black self. You know the women that go out here to the hair salon and get a perm? That shit is temporary, right or wrong? Because as soon as it rains, you're going back to Africa, right or wrong? But when you have to really come to grips with who and what you are as, 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 a, as a person, it's not cool to be ignorant because now you're going to be judged by that ignorant. And God, there's no respect of persons, man. I don't care who you are. You understand what I'm saying? When it rain outside, you getting wet just like everybody else, plain and simple. And that's just the reality of it. So much so, when my beautiful sister Lauren Hill began to prick our consciousness with what she, she gave us, uh, she ended up in jail. So when they downloaded the Diva program, we got Nicki Minaj. And this is no shot at Nicki or Lil' Kim or any of them. But we had to silence the Lauren Hills in order for that to happen. As long as she on the scene, we can't do the little Kim, Nicki Minaj, and the rest of the ones we try to set that mold for the rest of them to follow. So we have to silence, we have to silence this one. And a lot of times silencing them may not mean killing them or putting them in jail. It could be legally. You understand what I'm saying? It could be the wrong relationship with the wrong man at the wrong time. And we don't hear from them anymore. And then Lauren Hill said, yeah, in order to reach out people every now and then, you got to put a motherfucker at the end of the verse. <laughs> you understand? So you get people's attention to quote unquote, keep it a buck or keep it 100 or keeping it real. The fine line with the whole idea of not um, being able to lend aspects of who, the, the core of who you are to commercialism only lies in the depths of who you are as an artist in the first place. If it's not in you, then you ultimately won't end up there. Are, are you follow what I'm saying? This is why the lure of a public enemy was so att attractive to those of us that uh, want us to be free of being manipulated and controlled by an industry that only saw dollars, that only saw uh, the commercialization of an art form because it was them who put hip hop in a package, in a plastic, with a label, with a sticker, with a price, in a store in the first place. And we have to understand that. Uh, we had to learn that. Most of us in this room that's ever been artists uh, probably have been exploited. And that language is in the contracts. Um, they're gonna exploit your likeness and exploit the music. That's part of the business acronym, business language they have to exploit it to make money do you as a, this was the important thing about public enemy because we spoke outside of the music and this is why people said okay chuck d said it himself well, why do people have to artists have to sell out in order to sell out and then he also said if you're going to change the people around you then change the people around you <laughs> you understand what i'm saying so you won't have to sell out you morph that question into the whole idea of the N-word and it's very valuable that we kept those kind of individuals around us in the crew. Now, we didn't know the importance of a flavor or that cat that we would normally and, uh, um, and usually call the N-word. And I'm telling you right now in 2018, he is valuable and he is very, very important to keep a lot of these people in check 
and keep them grounded. You need that dude in your camp. I'm talking about Day Day, fucking peanut man man. You understand what I'm saying? Um, like them crazy ass cousins and nephews I got that don't give a fuck about none of this shit. That'll rearrange this motherfucking furniture. If any of you motherfuckers disrespect Griff, they will rearrange this fucking studio in here. Because they don't give a fuck about this. Don't fuck with my uncle. You need them dudes around you. Now, some of them motherfuckers may get you in trouble. You understand? They get your ass arrested every now and then. But you need them to let you know, look, man, well, like what you doing? We from the hood, man. Don't. Come on, we ain't never did that. This new. What you doing, man? Come on back over. You understand what I'm saying? To keep people, that reality check that all of us, that all of us need. And you were right. We did use that terminology in the home. And you also right. Other people do not know how to use it until we validated the ones that came in and disrespected the culture. We validated their ignorance. We allowed them to come into the house of hip hop and disrespect it. You understand what I'm saying? Here's the house of hip hop, beautifully decorated. You know, we got certain floors and we do certain things on each floor. But when you invite people to your house, you don't let them come in your bedroom, now do you? Relegate them to the living room. Let them know where the bathroom is in case they got to use the bathroom. Ask them, do they, are they thirsty and you want something to drink? That's the extent of it. We found them up in the bedroom, in the drawers, up under the mattress. What y'all doing? You don't know how to handle this. You understand what I'm saying? This, is, this comes from, out from the bowels of our culture. From the interior of Africa, come on over to America in the holes of ship. You don't understand what the Griot is about. He was the one responsible for telling the stories in the village. We held him and looked at him like he was the library. You don't disrespect that. That's why hip hop went from MCs to rappers. You understand? We was MCs, the masters of ceremony, the mic controllers. This whole idea of rapping, that's not all we did. When the music went off, we was able to articulate what we were talking about to our people without a beat. And this is what, this is what is missing today in hip hop. So the whole idea of commercialism left the whole aspect of uh, of who and what we are as a people and cut us off from the root of higher infinite power healing our people. Cut us off from the root of breaking. We don't see break dances today. Last time we saw break dances when the other people got a hold of it, the Jabberwockies and the rest of them and started making commercials and movies about dancing, hip hop dancing. And what's the white country chick on, on the YouTube, Soleil? They got country hip hop dancing. Go look her up. So when we when we when we validated them, oh, it's a wrap. You can go in, you can go in the neighborhood store right now and find rap snacks. Oh, it's a wrap. DJing, which was the djembe, it was natural rhythms, the pulsation of the nine systems of the body, pulsating at a natural rhythm, in sync with one another. Those natural pulsations of the nine systems in the body connecting to the nine planets, because we have this cosmic connection. And we're in tune with ourselves and we're in tune with everything else. Do you understand what I'm saying? With that rolling through us, these cats come along with the synthesizers and all that kind of stuff, taking us out of the vibratory frequency of who we really are. And on, at certain hertz, we're not able to connect back to the self. You understand what I'm saying? Not good. The MC disconnected from the original languages that we used to speak. Not, not, not good. Now ask the men in this room. So last time you asked, he went to a party and danced with a woman. Fuckers dance with themselves now. Why? Because we cut the connection. The connection is, is no longer, is no longer there. We exchange energy when you dance with a woman. You understand what I'm saying? You might whisper a little something in the ear, crack for the, for the phone number or something, but nonetheless, we have, <laughs> we have that, <laughs> that thing that we did with one another, exchanging that energy that balanced us out. You understand what I'm saying? We don't do that no more. But anyway, 